What up, what up? Wimbush here. And today I'm gonna to show you how to use my favorite asset library, Mega Skins. Um, more in particular, the plants that they have there. And to get started, I'm gonna use this ribbon grass. It says that it's free. So I think you can download it to follow along if you want, but this should work for any of the Mega Skin plant assets that we have here. And so since I do a lot of stuff for like Discovery Channel, building a lot of environments and stuff, I figured that I would share this method with you guys, how I render, or not render, but how I texture everything and bring it all together. So first, let me start with, um, oh, so in Mega Skins, actually I, you know, you export it from here. And then your exports, you have your different LOD levels. Now zero would be the highest resolution and then three would be the lowest resolution. But for now, I'll show you zero. And um, it just depends on how heavy of a scene you can handle. And so, and then how close you're gonna to be to your object as well. So I'm starting here with grass. I'm just gonna do my LOD zero. Now it gives us a couple of different variances. I believe this one has, yeah, it has up to six. And um, once you texture this out, you can actually use that texture on any of the six different variables there, which helps out a lot. And it gives you a lot of randomization. And so, Let's start by dragging our FBX. We're just gonna do LOD zero. Bring it in here, just hit okay. And there we have our basic grass. And now we come over to Redshift Materials, add a new material. It's gonna take a second for Redshift to get loaded up here. And there we go. Let's go to Edit Shader Graph. And now we can start dragging all of our stuff into our shader graph here so i'm gonna open back up bridge let me move this over a little bit i like using bridge but you can use explore if that's what you like to use move this stuff out a little bit so we can see it okay so i'm going to bring in my albedo my ao um i don't need displacement Let's see, I could bring in my normal, my opacity. I'm gonna bring in my roughness, my specular, and my translucency. And then we just click and drag those over here. And there we go. Now in our shader graph, we have everything laid out here in the middle. Let me make this larger. Click and drag this over here. So now we can start spreading out our textures that we brought in. So let's start with our albedo first. So we're gonna go out of color into our artist material, left click drag, and then base properties, diffuse, diffuse color. Give that a second to load in. And there we go, we have our diffuse color. Now we could go over to, let's say specular, click and drag this over till you get to the blue. Go under reflections, and we're gonna do that as reflection weight. Get that second in there, kick through. And then next we have our AO. So my AO, I'm gonna just use to give a little bit of shadow here. So I'm just gonna multiply it in my albedo. So my out color, I could bring here, go to adjustment and color multiplier. And that just adds a little bit of detail. I know some people like to use the ramp so they could kind of ramp up how dark it gets, but I'll just go with the basic multiplier here. It's a simpler setup. And then for my opacity, let's go out of color, bring it in here, and we go to overall. And now we go to opacity color, and you can look up here in our texture, it's gonna cut everything out. Now you can see we have our transparency in there. So moving on, I have roughness. Bring that over here to our material. Go under reflection, reflection roughness. And then for our normal, we're gonna actually have to bring another node over, which is under utilities, under bump, and then bump map. So we drag the bump map over here. Now we could bring our normal into our RS bump map, have it as a texture input. And then from here, we go to our RS map, our bump map, bring it into our material, and then it's under overall, you wanna to go to bump input. Now that adds a little bit of bump. Um, if you have a bump map, you can also use that in here. I just like using the normals. But when using our normal, 
you have to go to your bump map node here and under input map type make sure you pick tangent and then everything should be good to go now oh forgot about translucency i'm not 100 percent sure what this one's supposed to go under i usually go over here go under um backlighting translucency and then i'll do weight and i think that's where it's supposed to go but let me know if i'm putting that into the wrong spot but it seems to be working out for me here so let me close this out and now let me drag this up a little bit so you can see it our rs material if i alt left click and drag it over my material here you can replace it so now we have our grass material here let me go over to my settings let's set it up for a red shift and um yeah just for basics here everything we'll leave it at default now let me click on my redshift render view click play and there we go now we have our grass and if you want to add make it look a little bit dynamic you know you can always come over add a dome light as i like to do now i like this with a hdr which i have a couple of downloaded here so if you go under let me see i like this one the table mountain that seems to be my go-to one and if you ever want free hdr just go to hdrihaven.com you can see it in a couple of my other videos as well but that's a good place i get all these high-res hdr maps to light with so let me hit play again And let me turn off the background here. Enable alpha. Let me redo this again. And there we go. So now we have our, our plants all lit. And if you looked in my previous tutorial, I actually showed you how you could, you know, make this go across the terrain, which I could go real quick here using the new matrix. Well, it's not new, but it's new to Redshift. They added an update where you could use the matrix to scatter stuff. So I went up here, made a landscape terrain. Let's make this like 2000 by 100 by 2000. Get a nice big landscape here. And then let's go over to my graph, count on the matrix. And let's make our matrix instead of a greater way go to object and let's drag our landscape in there here and now you can see our matrix is scattered we can actually make it go on let's see let's just do vertex so it's on every single vertex here let's get out into a row just this is a quick example of how you could use this so then let's go over to matrix tags go on a redshift tags add an object tag and then under particle here let's click on custom object and I drag our grass into here and you're not going to see anything on the screen and that's because these squares are representing each um, each patch of grass here so you're only going to see it when you go to render under redshift so let me go here to our render view click play and there we go we have our grass but it looks like it's sideways. So let's go back to our matrix, get a transform. Let's drag this around, let's say to 90. No, it looks like that's upside down. So let's do negative 90. There we go. I think that's correct, yeah. Let's see. Let's do 180. Sometimes you just have to play around with these parameters to get what you're looking for. Mm, let's go over back to the object. Let's do vector up Y. Let's see if that will get us what we're looking for think so there so now we have 
a grass field here. Let's randomize it a little bit. Let's go under Mugraph, Effector, Random. So let me zero my position out. Let's move this around just a tiny bit. Then let's rotate it, just spin it around a lot. Go back to our render view and bring this down to like 50%. See what we're doing here. 75. Like so, and there we go. So it looks like our grass is a little bit big. You can always go under your object here, your object tag under scale multiplier. Bring this down. It's going to shrink our particles down a little bit more. And there we go. So now we have a grass field that renders quickly and we're good to go. So yeah, thanks for watching. That's just a basic rundown of how to texture everything in um, Redshift using the mega scans. And then just as a bonus, show you guys kind of how to play that out over your object there to make a grass field. So if you liked what I did here, make sure you leave a comment or if anybody knows where that translucency goes, please let, let me know. So I'm using it the right way in the future. And then as always, you know, subscribe to my channel. I'm going to keep posting more of these videos up and leave a like. And then until next time, keep creating.